Hello, everyone, and welcome to the recap of the day three in the Sarah Boone case. And after thinking about it last night, maybe not the best day for the state, but I didn't feel like some people in chat that it was a massive mistake and that uh, everything was ruined. Um, we started the day with the cross-examination of the leading detective. The defense tried to imply that they had lied to Sarah, that uh, they lured her to the police station under false presense, uh, pretenses, and all of it came off rather stupid. And I loved the lead detective's facial mannerism. You could see how she just felt all those questions were stupid. But then we went into a long back and forth about evidence and talking to Sarah, because next up was Sarah Boone. Sarah has to be number one in her own defense because she is introducing the battered spouse syndrome. And when she finally took the stand after a very long time and her defense again, running around like headless chickens, seemingly not knowing where the evidence was, what evidence they wanted to put in there, she started talking. And we got, I can't even remember what number of different explanation this is. The main takeaways is Sarah is a saint. Sarah loves her handicapped dogs. She tried to help George. He uh, didn't want to uh, see how good she was to him. She was always trying to help him, and he just wanted to get drunk. And when he got drunk, he got mean. And poor little Sarah, 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 Sarah. All of it given in the exact same tone of voice. There was no emotion at all at any point, not even when she got into the battered spouse part, because she was talking about what had happened was, and then her lawyer made her say that she felt unsafe when she went to bed that night after putting George into the suitcase. And she admitted, yep, she closed them up. She did take the videos. The reason why she took the videos where he's begging for his life was that she wanted to have a talk to him the next day to, to show him how she felt when he was like that. The video I, I saw the other day was a man begging for his life. It wasn't a man threatening her, a man doing anything. But she claims that after the two-minute video where he's begging for his life, she went over there with him in the suitcase and he started yelling he was going to kill her. And she started shaking the suitcase and uh, his hand poked out, which would have been in roughly a position that should be over his head. It was on the top of the suitcase. If you look at, and I don't know which way I'm pointing right now, but I'm trying to point to the top of this suitcase I'm inside right now. That's why she said she left the suitcase open so he could get out, which doesn't line up with how she says he was placed inside the suitcase because the way he was positioned was in a fetal position with his head up against the top of the suitcase, his legs pressed up against his chest. So there's no way he would be able to get his hand up here and get out. This arm would be locked with his knees in a very tight confine. So it I hope someone has common sense on the jury because Sarah's story doesn't make sense if you think about it. But maybe it's like in Canton, don't think about it, it makes more sense. But Sarah was the victim. She had to uh, beat him with a baseball bat because she was so afraid. And because she was so afraid after she be uh, beat him with the baseball bat, she went upstairs and called Brian. Brian don't remember that phone call because she always calls him when she's drunk. He didn't remember her calling him, talking about how afraid she was, but she claims that's why she called Brian. And because she's that afraid, she falls asleep. 
and sleeps for roughly 14 hours until Brian calls her the next day to remind her, hey, you have to take care of your kid today. But uh, whenever I have been very scared in my life, I always go to bed 10 feet from the person I'm scared of. It's totally normal. Please, someone with common sense be on the jury. But they got into the battered spouse syndrome. They, they were allowed to talk about prior bad acts on behalf of George. And oh my, was he a bad boy? He punched her, he threw her against the wall, he choked her, he threatened her poor little dogs, he kicked the dogs all the time. He even, when she made him a nice steak dinner, he just wanted to have smacks on top of the dinner. All of it seems like someone who is a massive alcoholic, of course, would do. And talking about being a massive alcoholic, because when the steak got to their cross, and a cross that I will agree with Chad wasn't tough enough, but they started asking her, how drunk were you? because you had this amount of wine. And we know that George only had a 0.13 BAC, uh, BAC. The amount of wine, remember it's the Magnum bottles, they, they shared five bottles of normal size wine. And he, he was probably, I wouldn't even say he was drunk enough that he had finished one off. Let's say he's finished one off uh, that evening, so he lost a little bit again. But he probably didn't have more than one, one and a half bottle with that BAC level. And Sarah admitted she was drunk when she woke up the next day. After 14 hours, she's still drunk. So this lady who can't drink, who won't drink, who don't drink, was so drunk the next morning, she was still drunk when the police arrived. I thought they made some good jabs of her trustworthiness, but I could see Chad was very split about this. Was it anything? Was it anything? But I still hope that people with a reasonable mind is on the jury because when you rehear her testimony, and if you have time before... Uh, Mo and Marissa will start today. Try and go back and listen to it. There are so many glaring mistakes in her cross-examination. I think the state probably looked at the jury and thought, ah, let's not go too much further with this because uh, it was late in the afternoon. They finished at 5.30. But still, she had so many glaring holes in her story. And her entire story was how she got treated, how she was stabbed in the leg, stomped in the face, and none of it had any medical records. Well, that's because George made her lie to, to everyone about what happened. But she called George's brother and had him beat George up so badly he needed um, facial reconstruction, but she couldn't talk to anyone about it. I, I feel the state could have gone harder, should have gone harder, but who am I to know what their strategy is? Today, police officers, expert witnesses, hopefully the state will uh, will be a little better today. I, I, I needed a little bit more yesterday, but um, I still think the two videos of him begging for his life, play them during closing, and she will go away for life. That's I would have ended the cross-examination. I would have played it for her to try and get her emotional response to it. She had zero emo emotional response to anything when she was asked yesterday. She could just as well have been telling you how to get to the Neo Pizzeria as talk about how her boyfriend passed away, the boyfriend that she loved so much that uh, she had to kill him. It's going to be an interesting day again today, but uh, Chad is very split on uh, if it was if she ruined her own case yesterday. I feel if you think about it, go back and listen to it. She clearly said so many stupid things that if people are listening to it, she dug her hole deeper. But I can understand people thinking, well, they got to introduce all of this 
evidence of prior bad acts. So maybe she can get them swayed that she was being beaten. But this is the fourth case I'm covering with self-defense. And this is the weakest case so far for self-defense. But the girls will run the ship today. So uh, show up, show some support, and uh, I'll probably pop in chat while I am taking care of Monday. Hasta la taco.